What's up guys? Uh, welcome back to VHP Engines. We are going to go into video number three of the HF series here and um, already this is blown up and expanding a little bit further than what I thought it was. And instead of being three or four videos, this actually might be five or six. Um, this is good though. I'm pretty hyped. This is actually kind of a new thing for me here. Doing a series of things this long. I think the only thing besides the engine building series I have, which I can't really count because it's not all the same engine. You know, uh, it would be like the Boost series, which I have a playlist that's all concerning Boost. Now, I think for you guys that have said that I'm, a, I'm more of a B and D series fan, we'll see that, <laughs> that this little fucking playlist that I'm making here will wind up being one of the longest I have on one specific topic. Now, before I get into the meat and potatoes here of uh, the conversation, I will say, I would like to say that um, I did a little additional video on Snapchat. This is going to be like exclusive Snapchat until the 24 hours passes up, and then I'm going to move to Twitter. I'm not going to share it on YouTube. I'm not going to put it on Facebook this time. It's not really a news update. It's just a follow-up to something I've already done. Uh, for you guys that don't know, uh, everybody who follows me on Snapchat gets a follow back. I do peek in on your stories from time to time as long as I see car stuff. Um, if you are interested in looking into what's going on there, it's VHP Chris. And at the end, uh, normally I leave this for a final message when I'm not too hostile, I'm thinking clearly, uh, that all the social media sites I use for this channel as a supplement are in, in the description below. And uh, Snapchat's on the last part of the list. It's VHP Chris. VHB, not a P. I know it's hard to sometimes, whatever. So, um, also, uh, I'd like to thank you guys for the feedback, or for most of your feedback. Some of the feedback, as you know from the video I left the other day, is kind of fucking annoying, but that's not your all's fault. Most of you guys have, or most of you guys that are active now and commenting and stuff aren't the same people that were here six months ago, so you don't know, you haven't seen everything I've done. Uh, for those of you that have stuck by and do jump out to point out things like this. I greatly appreciate it, you know. Um, <clears throat> I will address another thing before, one well, more thing before we get into the topic here, and that is uh, you guys definitely do keep me on my toes a lot about this whole random fucking uh, horsepower unicorn engines out there. And I will leave a, a link here to that video to talk about it because I talk about it. It's real short, guys. It's like three minutes long, and I talk and I address the you know what most of you guys leave in the fucking comments about when you see a super high horsepower stock block but I will add one thing to this uh, that I didn't mention the other day and because uh, uh, one of the guys commented uh, oh well they had that car running for three for four years yeah but again four years with how much actual driving time how much time spent as a daily driver versus how much time spent on the track I can sit a car, you know, my, my car, the, my project car that got stolen, sat for a year. My Integra has had its engine in it brand new for over a year now, and it hasn't been run. So I've had that motor in there for a year, but how much time is it actually seen being used? And I'm not here to start a debate about that again. I'm just saying, you know, these, these are all the things you guys don't consider. As a matter of fact, this shit has been talked about so fucking much that I think it's going to get its own video at the end of this, at the end of the series that I have, because I'm going to power through it and keep talking about the H and H and F. So, I think at this point we're longer than usual, and, and I will probably leave a timestamp just in case you all want to skip the stuff and get straight to the conversation, or just in case you want to rewatch later to hear about it again. I'll leave a leave a, a tag in the timeline or in the description below so we can hop past all this introduction stuff. And what we're going to talk about today is the solution to keeping an H22 and running forge uh, forge internals without having to do anything special, without having to buy special pistons. And that is something that I did not mention the other day in the FRM sleeve. Notice that that didn't say H22 video; it said FRM sleeves because this topic. The H22 with the closed deck is getting its own video, as you can see now that you're watching. So, uh, as someone was also smart to point out the other day, and I think he's a new subscriber, I can't remember the name off the top of my head, but you can comment here, and I'll give you a shout out next time around, is that um, the H20, H22 closed deck, which is the first generation, uh, first generation fucking H22, does not use the FRM sleeves that Honda later upgraded to and the H22. They uh, they used um, the regular iron sleeves. So, 
just like a B series. It hones the same way and all that good stuff. So uh, you can use forge internals in that without any problem. And you have the added benefit, uh, arguable, arguable benefit of having a closed deck, which reinforces the block a bit more, which will handle more boost. Now, with that being said, you know, it still comes down to the fact that it's iron sleeves. Yes, it has more reinforcement and bracing due to the closed deck, but it's still stock sleeves, stock uh, stock uh, iron material. It's nothing super strong. So now, if you've, uh, if you've watched my videos before, I've rated a stock block, stock internals to 350 if you want to keep a long, healthy fucking engine. And generally speaking, I say 500 horsepower is your limit when you're talking about stock sleeves on H22. Now, if you want to, this is something not something that I can say, and I don't just again, this is going out here and saying that yeah, you're gonna you can find engines out there, just about everything you can think of has been fine. You go on YouTube and search for this, you know, specific number, generally speaking, you can find a car that's making that with that kind of setup, you know. But again, you know, just because these are out there, don't mean they're running forever indefinitely. All this shit this is still stock sleeve material, uh, it can still give out on you. And I would say that if you want to keep it healthy and you want to play it safe, at the very most, and this is this is saying like pack it on some big balls, you know maybe you can squeeze 600 out of that uh, out of that stock sleeve block, out of the, just the stock sleeves, not the internals, the stock sleeves, and have it run. Me personally, regardless to closed deck or not, once I pass that 500 wheel horsepower mark, I'm still gonna be very nervous. But I think that I would be ballsy enough if I ever crossed 500 wheel horsepower in a fucking H, that I would take it, you know, take it to 600 horsepower. Um, oh, shit. Fucking brain fart. Um, so anyway, um, so if you're thinking about, if you really want to have H22 that you want to run with the, you know, stock sleeves, and then look for the JDM H22A or, you know, the first gen and second gen, or I might I think it might have even been three. I think it's H22A1, H22A2, and H22A3 that all had followed that same generation to close deck. I mean, I know if you're looking at the block itself, and it's just the block alone, you can see that it's got a fucking closed deck, and then you know that's what you need. Oh, but mentioning closed decks here, don't get that confused with H23. The H23 uh, was developed around the same time that... Um, the Honda upgraded the H22 block to the open deck with FRM uh, sleeves. The H23 is a closed deck, but it also has FRM sleeves. So I'll leave a link here for the FRM sleeve video, and you can go back and check that out to see how the FRM sleeves go. Give me one second here. I want to be 100% specific on the engine tags for the American side here. Uh... Ninety-four, so it might have been ninety-four, or it might have been ninety-five. Yeah, well, okay, yeah, it was ninety-four, ninety-four. It's uh, so the first generation of the H twenty-two goes all the way up to ninety-four. So in the H twenty-two A three, H twenty-two A one, H twenty-two A two, and H twenty-two A three are the blocks that you can find that have the closed deck. Those are the ones you can run with forged internals. Um, so, also, you know, the one thing I will say that's supposedly a hindrance to it, but I don't think it's too big of a deal, but I will mention that it has been a concern for some people, is that um, the reason why Honda let go of the closed deck block and went to an open deck block is because of cooling. So, if you're going to use the closed deck H22 and you're going to run boost through it, you may want to consider keeping or getting a bigger radiator not just like a full-size skinny one but like a full-size uh, fat one and uh, use that instead of like a half radiator or slim radiator um just to be on the safe side uh yeah so you know pointing out the h23 is frm uh h22a1 through 3 are the closed deck for the americans uh but you know, but you gotta remember too that the the number that you know that follows the the letter, you know H twenty two A H twenty two B, you know, she like along those lines, or um, I guess it's a bad example, B eighteen A B eighteen B. It's only 
well, I'm not saying it's 100% exclusive to the U.S. There might be other European countries and shit that rock them. But the JDM ones don't. The, the Japanese domestic ones don't have that number, you know, that follows that letter. So when you're looking at a JDM H22, it is possible that you could be getting one that says H22A and has one that, you know, this with an open deck in that. Uh, so you got to be careful with that. And, you know, if you're not 100% sure of where that's coming from, you might want to have the guy take off the head, or you may just want to stick with looking for an H22 block. Now, with all that shit being said here, I, I did talk about in the FRM sleeve that if you're using H22 and you want to go to a, a better route with um, your fucking your block choices, if you want to go a cheap and easy way, you can use the F23 block. Um, just know that you're going to be not using the same size. I did. I, I improperly said this the other day, and I said the H22 has an 86 millimeter bore. It does not have an 87. It's the F23 that has the 86 millimeter bore, and that goes. The importance of that plays will go into when we're talking about the G23. And yes, I know you guys are anxious to see this, but um, I, I was I felt more along the lines of making this one first. This is one of the simpler tasks to talk about compared to the G23. When I make that video. I really want to try and cover everything I can in there so that way it's a really solid one and I'm not going to say exactly when we're going to get to that video in this series but just know that we are going to get there um yeah and I think that's going to pretty much wrap everything up here oh uh, one more thing I, I'm going to do a little something I'm going to do something a little different when this is finished uh you guys you know you can cruise through the channel and you can see that I've made a couple videos that are series specific you know like I have the J series video and I have the D series video um, I'm going to make an H series video when we're done with this playlist here and that that is going to kind of be like an amalgamation of the playlist we're going to bring all the the most hot and important topics into one spot so that way it's easier to digest it may not have as much detailed information but it'll have all the most important stuff and I think I want to play with it a little bit I have a new subscriber on here who uh, said, you know, try and, try and shoot something a little different, and I think I may try. And honestly, you guys, to tell you 100% the truth, one of the main reasons why I don't go through all the extra, like, if you guys on here, if any of you, you know, watch these dudes, or the manga guys, or if you, like, if you know Comics Explained, Comics Explained is probably one of the best, not, not one of them, he is the best comic book storyteller, and storyteller in general on fucking YouTube. And if you watch his videos, the dialogue is perfect, he's well-spoken, it's clean audio, and he got all these slideshows of the panels, and it is makes for a nice little video to watch. Um, the reason why I don't do that is because I don't have a fuck ton of time for editing. It takes like the one shots that I take here, like this, are great for me because I just take it off the phone, I throw it on the computer, and it's straight away. And anytime that I have any kind of breaks in videos, I gotta splice shit together. And that takes forever to fucking bring it together. It takes me sometimes like an hour just to fucking edit into one solid piece. And then I got to do the upload time through YouTube. So for me to make a slideshow or whatnot, you know, the one that's going to look even halfway decent, it takes a lot of editing. <laughs> and it would, even for like a 10 minute video, it would take me fucking like two hours just to prep it. And that's not even including upload time. So one of the big reasons why I keep it on basic vlog stuff like this is just because it's it's you know it's so much easier. And then plus you know it, it gives a conversation. It gives you the face whether you think it's a fat ugly face or not behind who's fucking talking. Um, just in case y'all ever see me in the streets, come at me. <laughs> Good or bad, motherfucker. I'm ready for you. All right, guys. So um, yeah, social media is gonna be in the description below. And uh, feel free to comment anything you want to see, you know, in the comments below. Uh, you want to inbox me or whatever on Facebook, hit me up if you got a question or whatnot. Uh, don't worry about asking me a question. If you got a question, just go into it with that question. Don't be like, hey, I got a question, and then don't ask me because I'm not going to prompt you to ask me a question. If you got a question and you already inboxed me once, do it again. You don't need permission for me to ask the question. You know, if I don't want to answer it, you're just going to get silence forever. Um, generally speaking, if you do message me and I don't answer right away, then it'll be within the 24 hours normally. Uh, unless you, unless you're private message me on YouTube or whatnot, I don't hardly ever check that shit. Hit me up on social media, guys. All right, uh, so this is going to be, this has been pretty bloated. I know that you got a lot of extra information crammed in here around the topic. Um, if you managed to stick around and watch the whole video, thanks. Appreciate it. Give me a thumbs up if you liked it, if you got anything out of it. Um... 
And if you're new to the channel, this is one of the first things you're seeing. You click on VHB engines below. I got a fuck ton of shit like this. Uh, and I have a bunch of hands-on stuff for engine building tutorials. Uh, actually, I'll probably start linking that playlist in uh, the videos again. It's been a while since I've done that. Alright guys, uh, again, thanks for watching and peace. I'll probably see you guys tomorrow.